Some Minecraft advancements are really easy to get. You can get an advancement for holding stone, picking up a crafting table, holding iron, eating anything, or even just dying gets you an advancement. There's a lot of advancements in this game, 102 total. But what if I told you I can beat the game with none of them? Well, that'd be a lie. Some of them are 100% completely unavoidable, like the end when you enter the end, for example. But how many are actually required? A few people have come up with this question themselves and did their best to answer it. Like the channel Banana and Bread, which beat the game with seven advancements. They say only two in the video, but ignored root advancements, which adds five. Another channel, Minmax, who inspired me to try this, figured out how to beat it with only five. Both of those are great videos and are definitely worth watching, as they solve problems in really unique ways. But of course, I did my own attempt and found ways to do it with even less advancements. So here it is, a perfect low advancement Minecraft run. It starts with world generation. Obviously, I could use a set seed to have a finished end portal and go straight to the dragon fight, but that's boring. So I chose to do a random seed run. And fun fact about Minecraft, it's actually impossible to generate a 12 eye portal with a random seed. All of the 12 eye seeds are out of the random number generator range. With that cleared up, I spawn into the world to an immediate feeling of anxiety. There are several advancements that are always looming, waiting for you to slip up. The advancement Minecraft is given if you ever hold a crafting table. Adventure is given if you ever kill anything or die to anything. Husbandry is given if you ever consume anything. And there's a couple more, but we'll get to them later. In summary, I am very limited. No killing, dying, eating, or crafting. The only thing to do is explore. There's a few things I'm looking for. The biggest priority is a crafting table. I can never hold one, but that doesn't mean I can't use one if it happens to be around. And there are five structures that can naturally generate a crafting table. Taiga village houses, desert village houses, witch huts, igloos, and pillager towers. So before I can do basically anything, I need to locate one of those. But after only a few minutes, I encountered my first problem, hunger. I can't eat because of the husbandry advancement, and if that bar gets too low, I won't be able to sprint anymore, which isn't technically necessary, but very annoying. Without eating, there's only a single way to refill that hunger bar with regular Minecraft speedrun rules, and that's to die. Now, you're probably saying, hey, that's an advancement. Well, not quite. The adventure advancement is only given if you die to a mob. If you die on your own terms, like by drowning, that doesn't give the advancement. So there's the solution, just respawn out of bed. Unfortunately, again, it's not that simple. Beds are incredibly dangerous blocks because right-clicking them at night gives the sweet dreams advancement. So if I ever get low on hunger at night, I have to dig myself into a hole and wait 10 minutes until daytime to reset it. Since I was live streaming this and waiting 10 minutes almost every Minecraft night is incredibly boring, I asked my Twitch chat if they thought using peaceful mode was acceptable to refill the hunger bar, and they unanimously said yes. So I relied on peaceful quite a bit this run. Technically, it's still possible on easy and hard, but I was doing this for the content and just to prove it's possible. Back to the run though, it took me a full 40 minutes to find what I was looking for. This is just a regular igloo. And it has our crafting table! With this crafting table, I was finally able to make some tools. Only wooden, of course, as collecting stone is an advancement. It was a start, but not quite enough to enter the nether. Now I needed some iron first. Not iron ingots or pickaxes. Those are both advancements. I really wish I could use any of that, but we can't. I needed iron nuggets. I'd collected 63 already, but still needed a couple more. So to find them, I went boating in the ocean. Looting ruined portals and shipwrecks along the way, after only 20 minutes, I had everything I would need to enter the nether. I just needed to get back back to that crafting table. Okay, we're looking. There is a crafting table here. Oh yes, okay. Or I guess a new one works too. Now I can finally use those nuggets. By crafting them into ingots using the table and never letting the ingots hit my inventory slots, I was able to craft a hopper, a bucket, and an extra flint and steel, all while avoiding the acquire hardware advancement. I now had everything I needed for the nether. The things I had just crafted, wooden tools, golden pants, and no way to build a portal. There are two common ways to build a nether portal, using obsidian and using lava buckets to place obsidian. Both of those are tied to advancements, so that's not gonna happen. There is actually a speedrun method to build nether portals without buckets, but that's not really viable on version 1.19, but I still had an idea that would work. A simple solution to the problem. Since a nether portal frame has to be at least four blocks wide and five blocks tall, just find a lava pool that big. So after filling up my inventory to avoid picking up cobblestone and digging around for a 
bit, I managed to find one. I traced around the portal shape with some sand, placed some water to convert the lava, and those of you who are attentive probably noticed I have diamond tools now. So I did manage to get them without any advancements, but I really don't want to explain that yet because it's related to a surprise later, but I, I will explain, I promise. It took a little over three hours, but I was finally ready. It's time for the first advancement. Okay, it was actually two advancements, but there's literally no way to avoid those. Upon arriving in the nether, they are both awarded to the player simultaneously. In the nether, I had two goals. Get ender pearls and get blaze rods. There are a lot of problems with these two goals. I can't kill anything to get the rods or pearls because that's an advancement. I can't enter any nether structures because that's an advancement. I can't even explore too much. That's an advancement too. I decided on the easier goal first, obtaining ender pearls. To get those, I really couldn't kill Enderman, so I had one other relatively convenient option, piglin bartering. There is the O'Shiny advancement, but as long as you're wearing gold armor, that one's nothing to worry about. Except for the stone and obsidian and iron boots they drop, which all have advancements tied to them. That's where the hopper comes in. By putting all the drops into a chest, I could manually filter out all the stuff I need. Then it was just a matter of trading away all the gold I had picked up in the overworld from monuments and ruined portals. Once I got my 12 pearls, fire resistance potions, and a pile of string, I was ready to find some blazes. Making sure not to visit all the nether biomes, which is an advancement, I found a fortress after not too long, but of course I couldn't enter it, so I skirted around the exterior until I found a blaze spawner. Now for the hardest part, the blaze rods. There are two major issues with obtaining blaze rods. The monster hunter advancement and the into fire advancement. I will be skipping both of these, but let's talk about monster hunter first. Blazes will only drop their rods if the player gets credit for killing the blaze. But the monster hunter advancement is granted when you kill a hostile mob. It seems that it's impossible to get a blaze rod without monster hunter. But if you paid close attention to that wording, there is a very slight difference in the conditions. You only need some credit for killing the blaze. You don't actually need to kill it. This means that if you damage a blaze and let another mob finish it off, that actually satisfies the conditions for dropping a blaze rod. So my solution was to fishing rod a blaze into a trap, punch the blaze once, then let an angry piglin shoot at me to do the rest of the work. And sure enough, the blaze rods do get dropped. After 20 minutes of killing blazes this way, I had collected six rods. But now what? I obviously needed to craft the rods into blaze powder, but that would require me to put them in my inventory and get the into fire advancement, right? The answer is actually no. We found a way to craft using resources that aren't in your inventory. The other two runs I mentioned skipped the into fire advancement, but they downgraded their Minecraft to an earlier version to use a specific glitch in version 1.16. I will not be doing that. Here was my solution instead. I funneled the blaze rods into a chest boat and hauled the boat all the way back to the overworld using fishing rods to have it gain height if needed. Then, I drew dragged it along the caves, up a bubble column, all the way back to the crafting table. And it was finally time for the hardest trick in the run. Actually crafting the blaze powder. I found that if you're interacting with a storage container or block GUI, you can put the items in the player's offhand using the hotkey, and the advancement system won't detect it until the menu is closed. So if there was a way to instantly switch to another GUI, say a crafting table, without any regular gameplay in between, the advancement system would not detect the item, and you could pull the rods out of your offhand and into the crafting grid to create the powder. Fortunately, there was a way to switch instantly. It just requires a tick-perfect input of closing the chess boat inventory and opening the crafting table within the same game tick. We got it! Okay! There's no... no advancement. Put them in the crafting table. And that's also how I did the diamond pickaxe. I just used TNT to blow up some more, brought it to the table, and did that whole process. With that done, it was just the end game remaining, still with only two advancements to my name. I used Eyes of Ender to locate the stronghold and started to dig down. But there's still a couple more advancements to worry about here. Like, I spy. If I ever enter the stronghold, that's an advancement. So once I found the stronghold location, I carefully excavated around it and explored behind the walls until I discovered the portal room. Then it was an easy process of digging out below the portal and adding the eyes to light the thing. The key to skipping I spy was just having an extra ender pearl. Turns out you can throw it in and go straight to the end. And with that, my final advancements. The two advancements you receive when entering the end. I just needed to kill the dragon without directly hurting it to avoid freeing the end. If you've watched a Minecraft speedrun, you know where this is going. And... Oh god, oh god, I messed it up. Um... We finished it off! <laughs> I'll take it! 
I'll take it. That's Minecraft finished with only four advancements. It's the lowest anyone has ever gotten, as far as I know at least. It was an awfully painful seven hour long run. So subscribe if you liked it. Thanks.